Hello, dear friend. Praise the Lord. Thomas Manton IV here. I am under a very heavy anointing, and I, I've been uh, really waiting on God about some, you know, things he, he's talking to me about. And I wanted to uh, just wait a few moments until I heard clearly something different. You know, it's one thing to continue in a vein that you're, you're going in. And it's another thing to uh, hear something, you know, deeply profound. And I want to entitle this, welcome all you that are coming on, share this afterwards. I'm going to get right into it. And I, and I don't plan to be, but just a few minutes because I want to drop this revelation. I really want to give this to you. And um, it's different. It's deep. It's unique. Uh, I want to entitle this, Our Quest for Manifested Brilliance. Our Quest for Manifested Brilliance. Okay, now in, um, in 1 Corinthians 2.9, I'm reading from the Modern English Translation. The rulers of this world didn't know anything about the wisdom of God. You know, they, they were working in another kind of thing. Stupid, I would say. And because the Lord said, as the scripture said, what God has planned for people that love him is more than eyes have seen or more than and more than ears have heard. And it's even greater than what has already entered our minds. You know, the Lord is. Uh, is, is vast in his imagination. Let me keep reading. And this is 1 Corinthians 2, verse 9 and 10. But God's Spirit has shown us everything, and he finds out everything, even what is deep in the mind of God. And he said, you are the only one who knows what's in your mind, and God's Spirit is the only one that knows what's in God's mind. Some people, you wonder what's going on in their mind. I, I'm calling this our quest for manifested brilliance. I, I posted something on my social media page uh, a few moments ago, and it's uh, way, way late in the wee hours of the morning here, and I'm just up early praying and uh, meditating and working on some, some uh, things on my computers and some documents and, you know, web configurations and for the ministry materials and some of my writings and some things like that, you know, a lot of different th things and uh, communicating overseas to other time zones, you know. We're trying to set up a live portal. It's not going to be hard to do. Uh, it's just that, you know, I'm just ready to do it right now. Set up a live portal where we can do live editing uh, for, you know, video, audio, uh, books, and we're already underway with that, and God is really uh, helping us to um, establish that very quickly, you know, and again, this is, this is very doable, okay, it's just a matter of the focus, the time, now that had to enter my mind, you understand, that had to become clear to me in my, like, vivid imagination right now, so that I could uh, uh, be, begin to, you know, implement that for the production of the word of the Lord going to the nations of the world. I love what it says further. It says, but God has given us his spirit. And this is why we don't think the same way that people of this world think. And now this is a standard that God set for us, Okay. And God taught us by his wisdom, and we, could rec we need to recognize the blessings that God has given us. That's through an enlightened mind and imagination. And then the scripture begins to say, uh, later on, we understand what Christ is thinking. Now, that's a modern English translation. You know what it says? We have the mind of Christ, okay? <laughs> we, we have the mind of Christ, and... <laughs> But I like the way this modern is, but we understand what Christ is thinking. Woo! Never heard that version taught before, right? See, every, can I tell you, when you're so churched out, 
You're in your churchianity instead of real Christianity, which is the, manifested, the manifestation of Christ, Christ's glory, Jesus' uh, power, the Holy Spirit's brilliance in manifestation. When you're so much in church, all you do know is the whithersoever thou goest, and you, you learn to parrot the word, and you know the scriptures, and you know how to do church. You know how to do the song, you know how to do the dance, you know how to do the, the vibration, you know how to do the, the message, you know how to preach, you know how to sing, you know how to, when to say amen, you, you know. And then when the preacher really gets going, someone gets up from the crowd and, you know, runs up past the preacher and throws an offering on the altar. You know, we, we've learned, we've learned, how, and, you know, that, a lot of that, you know, that can be genuine when you feel moved and you want to sow into the anointing and the atmosphere of that moment. So that's a powerful thing that happens. But, but I'm just talking about the things at church, you know, and all these things we do, we... We, we, we get good at that. But what about getting good and brilliant? This is what I want to say here about producing something for the world. I wrote a statement uh, in, in one of my posts, and you could also read that on the Facebook page, uh, that the Lord said to me, and I wrote this. I said, you know, are you going to get up? Are you going to get up and get get moving and, and get manifesting something and even be, be smart enough and powerful enough to even get out of your own way, get out of your own way and produce something great for the world? When is that going to happen? <sighs> what, what, when is that going to happen? So we, we, we're, on a, we're on a quest. I'm on a quest to see brilliance, you know, imagination, uh, a, a great move of the spirit, yes, but in great manifestations of getting things done. It shouldn't take you half a lifetime to get something that needs to be manifested and done, done. Can you feel me here? Can you feel what I'm saying? The Lord is tired of, you know, waiting also for people to get their things together. Uh, there's two discs that I have. I want you to get these, and you can get these on our website right now on thomasmanton.com. And uh, uh, the power to get wealth. This is in a conference that I did in Nigeria. Nigeria is a great place. You know why? Because the people in Nigeria, listen, and the people in Nigeria have faith, and the people in Nigeria are diligent, and they're wild, and they go for it. And they, they, um, they, they, they grab a hold of things, you know, and that's why you see that the largest church buildings in the world are in Nigeria. The biggest ministries in the world are in Nigeria. It used to be in Seoul, Korea was the biggest one, but now that's been surpassed. I mean, one building is being built now that seats 150,000, and another one just got opened in Abuja, Nigeria, that seats 100,000. And this friend of mine spoke, and I have a good feel, a funny feeling that uh, the offering he got when he spoke in one conference in Nigeria, it was so large that he came back and bought himself a new S-class, an S-class Mercedes. I don't know if it's brand new or what, but he just got it all of a sudden. And I'm just wondering, hey, you know, why'd you buy that car now? And I want to ask him, did you get so blessed? You know, in that place, he pr probably was from there. I visited uh, an oil uh, a businessman and he had a palace, you know, and God had me pray over him. And he said uh, uh, to, to, to my host there, he said, I should send him a million dollars. And he had a few troubles, and we're praying him through that, and we, we lost touch a bit, but uh, I'm still waiting for the million. He needs to do that if he uttered it out of his mouth. This man had, like, uh, televisions that were custom-made in Asia. Like, you, you talk about, like, an 88-inch, and you think it's a big deal, the new OLED TV, Sony Bravia, and I just looked at that. They said they're going to be putting them out, and they'll probably be about $20,000 to buy that television. When they come out, I thought, well, wait a year. You'll get it for nine or ten or less. Don't buy it when it comes out. But he had things custom-made, like 200-inch, you know, with a thick thing like that and a gold frame around it and probably even gold-plated, gold real gold on sprayed on it, plated, you know, and uh, all of that. And the dining room sat like uh, 40 people, long, long royal table, like king, you know, these like kings living. And this is, this is how people live there and operate, you know, and a fleet of cars outside, the best, most luxur luxurious cars. And I thought that's normal for them. <clears throat> and these people have, you know, 
even if they're, you know, not the most spiritual, but they're, they're saved, they've accepted Jesus, and uh, they have ministries that come to pray for them and prophesy over them. You know, the whole system is set up like that. Now, in that kind of environment, I did this teaching, The Power to Create Wealth. It's on two audio CDs, which I'm holding here, one and two, and it, or, or, or on one DVD. And you can get these right now on our website. I'll be glad to mail them out to you, ship them out to you in America. Uh, we're going to devise an online, you know, uh, downloadable way to, for people all over the world to get them. All this is in the works, okay? Manifested brilliance. You know, I see how things are supposed to be. I see how they're supposed to... Uh, uh, be, be done and, and going on, and that's what we want. And I, I came across this statement the other day called, it, it, it says, make your own path. I thought, this is brilliant, you know? God has given us his, his ingenious ways and his ingenious mind that we can absolutely create something great and make our own path. Don't ever feel sorry for the way things are, if the religious people are funny and the church is funny and you feel bored and stuck and lonely and abused and overlooked and depressed and sad and just, you know, been, been, you've been misused and mishandled, so what? Rise up above that and create your own path, you know? And yeah, yes, people shouldn't do that. Yes, people are like a wicked when they do wicked things. And God, but God's going to sort that out. A major prophetic word that the Lord gave me for a certain country, we're going to release it soon, uh, for the nation of Brazil. And uh, I was just there. And the Lord spoke to me so clearly about how he's going to bless the entire nation. But he said also he's going to judge people that mishandle God's things and God's servants. So God has his own system. You know, he says, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I will repay. Don't you worry about it. You rise up and create your own path. And if you know to do something good, if you don't do it, it's sin to you. So get busy about doing the, the best right thing that you can every day. God's afforded you an opportunity. Don't, don't feel bad in any way because God's given people opportunities more than he's given to other people, then that's the person that needs to arise and shine for the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Though, though gross darkness covers the earth and many people, but God said, my light will be upon you when I've chosen you as my own elect and I've given you grace and I've given you ability and I've given you my favor <laughs> and I've given you uh, my you know, ability to create something that's never been done before. So what are you waiting for? Make it happen. Time is of the essence. So this statement came to me very strong by the Spirit a few moments ago. As I was writing something in my office, the Lord said to me, uh, can you rise up now and, and, and even get out of your own way and manifest brilliance, create something that's not been created before? We see people in the world that create these beautiful machines and artwork and things. And, you know, God is the author of all brilliant gifting. Even if the enemy twists it around and something's manifesting in the world through people that are in other religions or don't know God, you know, like as we would say, uh, church wise and, you know, Jesus wise, uh, the talent that a, that a man or woman has came from the big boss. Now, he, again, he said here in uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 2, he even said in verse 15, he said, people who are guided by the Spirit can make all kinds of judgments, but they cannot be judged by others. Because no one's uh, been appointed by God to be a judge. That's a religious spirit. That's a religious demon. That's a, that's a wrong operation. And people that do that, please know, my friend, that God is going to sort that out. You don't have to worry about that. Now is the time to get back in the, in the, what can I say? I don't want to say the oven because it's hot. I don't want to say the incubator because that's what you use when an infant is born. Not the right word. Not the vault, because you don't want to be stuck in there. What's the word I'm looking for? You know what I mean? Get in the, uh, the innovative process. 
machinery, mechanism through your mind, imagination, operation to create what God wants to be manifested in the earth by the touch of wisdom, the touch of brilliance that he's given and put upon us. Are you hearing God's prophet? So this is the day and the hour of a quest for manifested brilliance. I tell you, people that are brilliant, people that are reliable. You, you ever have people that uh, you, you, you interact with them and you just roll your eyes and sigh and hmm, moan because you remember how unreliable they are? Or, or, you know. Then you have people that don't return phone calls. Then you have people that you were good to and they're so rude that they don't even come back at you with... Uh, you know, some kind of good response to help or whatever. They're just all caught up in something else. And they, you know, they'll just remain stuck, especially when you have the chance to interact with something brilliant. You know, but, you know a lot of people do things like that. And really, it's, 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 it's tragic on both sides because they miss the blessing, but the work that's supposed to be done doesn't get done. But God has yet many others. And we're on a quest for manifested brilliance. We want to see people arising and shining. We want to see people that have the grace and ability and, and character and tenacity and quickness, you know, to begin to move fast and do things brilliantly, quickly, 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 quickly. Now, 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 now. Because the clock is ticking. I was saying this uh, before. The tick-tock, tick-tock said the clock. The clock is ticking. Tick tock, tick tock, says the clock. And the Lord, and the clock, time even says, I'm going forward with or without you. It's you to make the decision to make time work for you. Jesus even said, redeem the time for the days are evil. So I feel this, I feel this prophetic, this is a prophetic message to the earth. I, I feel like the Lord is also on a quest to find people, amen, and you think, well, hasn't he found them all already? Doesn't he know where they all are? And, you know, God is in control. If you want to say God's in control of everything the way it happens, you're crazy. God never ordained sickness for you. He never ordained dis disease for you. He never ordained lack or poverty for you. He never ordained uh, uh, loss or failure or devastation or you know, misfortune or shame or loss or wrong people. He never ordained that. Those things happen along the way because the enemy was busy and evil people were busy about doing things. But God never ordained all of that. He wanted everything to be perfect. Remember in the garden? How was it there in the Garden of Eden? Beautiful and perfect. Until the man sinned and the woman sinned and they were driven out of the garden and the gate was closed again. But inside, even the voice of the Lord had an expression to walk with them as like, like in the cool of the day, you know, like, like he had his own expression to walk in the midst of the garden. And, at, you know, someone, someone asked, who is the richest person that ever lived? Adam was. I was in a conference and someone asked that question. I wanted to shout. I know the answer. No one else did. Nobody answered it. They're trying to say Solomon, you know, go by, again, what we've read or heard, taught about Abraham. Or, and those are very wealthy, multi, multi-billionaires. David, yes. Job even, yes. Multi-billionaire. But uh, Adam had everything. He was in control of everything. He, he named everything. He named everything. He had access to everything. Even God was there with all of the creation under Adam's care. Who was ever more wealthy than that? No one. And then Jesus came as the second Adam to restore us back to the original glory. And yet most people, and I'm preaching good here. This is prophetic. This is a prophetic word. Most people can't hardly even get out of their own way. I love you. Preaching this to help you, to kickstart you. What's coming behind this word, from this word, in manifestation is going to be a manifestation of brilliance, a manifestation of creative glory, a manifestation of um, uh, a supernatural, divine knowing of things, ways of doing things, ways to make right decisions, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of understanding. 
And also, like, when you get into that flow and the momentum of that, then things begin to kick in gear through other people, you know? Other, other people begin to act right. Other people begin to uh, produce, you know? And things begin to go. It's really you to have the machine going. And when you're going, well, I'm telling you, other people begin to come and manifest. But this is, this is my biggest prayer and has been for some time. I'm telling you, I've really prayed this. I've really, really, really prayed. Oh, my God, if you knew the prayers and the tears and the, the intercession and the, 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 the realms of, of feeling even pain and to birth this thing like a, like a, like a midwife, like a mid-mediator, intercessor, to bring this into being, man, like the Melchizedek kind of priesthood, the invisible one who no one could trace, you know, and then say, now I'm stepping into time to release something new, and it's going to be birthed and become a perpetual thing. You know, it, it, it's um, this thing about people manifesting God's brilliance, people being raised up to function in the height of excellence, People being raised up to flow in the order of heaven on the earth. I prophesy over you. That, that, I'm not talking about some high dimension or a goal of something that can never be done. I'm prophesying to you in a very practical level. I'm speaking this over your life that you, my friend, and me, myself, you will be the one ha -ha, who... flows in the realms of creative brilliance. Kabra bahaya. Oh my God. Oh my God. I wanted to put some music on, but I was I was so excited. I was so loaded with this word I didn't even set up the uh, the audio outlet over here for the speakers. But it's okay. And I'm not going to get up to move. I'll come back at you another time. We'll flow with that, with some prophetic, uh, some prophetic music, and get into the realm of the spirit. But I, I'm pre I'm preaching this here prophetically. You, you know, God wants you to walk in His manifested brilliance. God wants you to walk in His manifested power. To do what you say, Prophet of God, to innovate. To create, to procreate, to cause a new business to go into motion that's going to work perfectly. To cause investment strategies that are going to work perfectly to flow. To cause uh, your ministry, if you're in ministry, to be the most creative. Now, I know I'm very unique, you know, and I'm not saying that to, 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 any, to blow any trumpet or or, or, or sing any songs of how great I am. No, I sing how great thou art about the Lord. To him be all the glory. But he's put his hand on my life to be, made me very unique. And I'll never apologize for that. I'll never apologize for being rambunctious, wild, determined, daring, brilliant, elegant, excellent, opulent. It, people say, oh, you wear these beautiful things and wow, look at you and I had some religious dog, just a real clown, criticizing my, my watches and my, my clothes. And my, I thought, well, once, from whence comest thou? You must have crawled out from under a rock. I, I thought, well, looking at you, I'm not getting any inspiration about living good, so just pipe down. <laughs> I just blocked them out. I just blocked them out. I just blocked their access, and I can't. But there's some people that think like that. God made everything so beautiful. Oh, my God. Let your, be free in Jesus' name. Let your imagination soar. Let your voice roar. Let the outpouring of blessing pour. Upon you. Be, dream as big as you want. Set goals as, as high as you want to achieve them. Do what you want to do. Let it all flow. Let it all flow. Let it all flow. You, you see yourself living in a big, beautiful, elegant house. You see yourself driving beautiful vehicles. You see yourself having your own tailor-made wardrobe. 
You see yourself traveling the world. Do it. Do it. Where, where's the where's the uh, where's the article of writ that says you can't do that? It's not in the word of God. You know, the Bible says, you know, we always confess. I want to be what it says. I want to do what it says. I want to become what it says. I want to have what it says. Well, that's a lot. You want to have what's in the Bible? You're going to have the power of God, as I just read to you in 1 Corinthians 2. And you're also going to have riches and wealth and healing and health and deliverance and freedom and blessing and creative, witty ideas to make witty inventions and, and money to answer all things and the wealth of nations coming. Amen. According to Isaiah 60, let's read the Bible. And according to Isaiah 45, uh, 2 and 3, that you'll have... Um, you know, hidden treasures coming to you and the power to get wealth, Deuteronomy 8.18 and Deuteronomy 28.1-13. to The blessed verses there, you'll have all of those things. You'll be above only and not beneath the head and not the tail. You'll be risen up over regions and nations and societies and you'll, you'll, the blessings of the Lord will come and overtake you and you'll have so much, you know, you just won't know how you'll have to pray for the wisdom of God to handle it all. You want to have what's in the Bible? Remember Moses, when he said, uh, Lord, we're going to have to ask you to stop because we have so much, we don't know where to put it. You want to have what's in the Bible? Remember when the children of Israel came out of Egypt? This is utterance in the Holy Ghost, folks. This is preaching under the anointing. This is just flowing like a river here. Remember that? Remember that? And I'm not reading any notes here. I'm just flowing by the Spirit. It's coming from my memory and my imagination. It's brilliant. Brilliant manifestation right here. The, the manifestation of brilliance, our quest for it, is happening right now. And I'm praying every word I'm speaking is coming upon your life, the glorious excellence that God wants. Remember when the children of Israel came out of Egypt, they brought the wealth of the nation. Who gave them the thought? They should have just ran for their lives and prayed that they, they didn't have any more chains on them. They didn't have to build any more pyramids or whatever they were building. They didn't have to work in the desert and sweat. They didn't have to have the slave master and be the slaves and be the underlings. They were just going to get free to go somewhere else just to breathe and not to have to do any work for their ta evil taskmasters, huh? You think that'd be enough? But no, God said, I want you to have the wealth that they built. Now I'm going to give it to you. You worked for them. Now you're going to get paid by them. They would never give it to you because they're wicked, but I'm going to flip the whole thing around and give it to you and even open up the Red Sea that you can go across on dry land. And then when you get across and I'm going to drown them all and kill them all because they're just wicked and I just hate what they've done to you and their day of reckoning and recompense has come. Woo! That's how it works. He said, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. You're going to have that. You're going to have an advocate. The Holy Spirit is your advocate, like a lawyer, like your... Your advocate, he's your helper, amen. He's your friend, he's your intercessor, he's your guide, he's your teacher. He's the one who anoints you to get wealth. He's the one who anoints you to be a witness for him, to win souls. He's the one who gives you creative brilliance and strategies and ideas to advance the kingdom around the world. It's him. It's him. And that's the connection we need to make. So the quest for brilliance is what? It's going to come from where? Homework, homework, uh, teacher to student question. Answer, please. It's going to come from the Holy Spirit. It's going to come from Him. It's going to come from Him. Wow, I feel your presence here, Lord. Thank you, Father. I declare in the mighty name of Jesus over the person listening to me right now, watching, listening, wherever you are, that God Almighty we begin to grant you his brilliance. He began to grant you the spirit of wisdom, knowledge, might, understanding, power, the fear of the Lord. In other words, reverence for him that you have to get his work done and accomplished. That you can't wait and delay and deny and be derailed. You got to get up. You got to get moving. You got to get out of your own way. You got to look in the mirror and say, I see a multi-millionaire champion in business. You got to look at yourself in the mirror and say, I am the manifestation of God's brilliance today and every day in my life and for the rest of my life. And today begins the greatest uh, next season and journey of my life. The rest of my life will be the best of my life. 
The best of my life will be the rest of my life. Starting today, it's a new season. He, God even said, don't remember the things of old or the former things. He said, forget about those things and rise up and press on to the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus, Paul said. So it's not enough for us to just stay stuck. And as I was saying uh, yesterday, uh, uh, striving to survive, that's not a vision from God. God wants you to be the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath. He wants you to thrive and then revive. He wants you to be formed greatly so then you can reform. He wants you to vibe, to live brilliantly so you can revive the world. He wants to pour out his spirit and power through you. He wants to give you, you know, treasures of hidden places and darkness and, and things that were there and like you never knew how you were going to walk into that thing, but the Lord led you to go into that place where now all of a sudden you have the opportunity to be wealthy. You have the opportunity to receive great blessings. Thank God for it. And forget about other people that are not helping you. One, a few things that I said uh, uh, that you, you, you need to uh, find the people that are good, that can help you, and you need to never consider or worry about people that will hinder you in any way or hurt you in any way or that, that don't help you. And then you need to find ways of staying excited and motivate yourself. Remember, David encouraged himself in the Lord. <sighs> so we want what's in the Bible. We want from 1 Corinthians 2, the brilliance of God. And we, we're on a quest for his manifested brilliance. We want to be the head and not the tail. We want to be the innovator. We want to be the brilliant one. We want to be the one who's making things to happen. We want to be the one who has experienced the blessings of the Lord that make rich and add no sorrow with it. We want to be the ones that are experiencing the wealth of the wicked being laid up for the righteous. And not that it's just there, but literally that it's now being transferred and coming strongly into our hands and accounts all over. We need to receive wisdom and think ahead. Well, now this is going to happen. So what's going to happen next? And, and know that time is of the essence. Speed, the grace for speed, the need for speed is here. The, the, the time is of the essence. Tick tock, said the clock. Said, I, time says I'm going ahead with or without you, you know. It's, it, uh, we're not waiting. Time waits for no man, no woman. No man and no woman. It just keeps tick-tocking, tick-tocking, tick-tocking away, slip-sliding away, moving, 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 forward, 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 forward. You got to get on that thing. Every hour is, is, a, is a golden treasure chest of opportunity, you know? Uh, the time of day right now, it, it's, a, it's amazing what time it is, but you know what? I, I, would, I have a two-level, uh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful house. Oh, my, thank you, Jesus. I'm looking across at my, uh, my other great room in my office here, and one of my offices. And the Lord... Uh, Stop me. I was about to walk upstairs. There's something I wanted to do upstairs and stop me right before I can get to the stairs. And I took a, my feet took a left turn. I went over into my office and I said, I'm going to fix a few things here. And, and sleep just like left me. I had no desire to sleep, no desire to lay down, no desire to go rest. Rested enough, you know, in the in-between hours. Did it already. I mean, we'll do it when I need to. And I just felt that. And now this is great flow of this thing, because time is of the essence. We don't have till another day anymore to figure it out. And you know, have you ever thought about time you've lost? Oh, let me talk about time for a minute. Have you, thought, have you ever thought about time? This is, this is brilliance and manifestation to think about time, the plan to use time correctly. Have you ever thought about the time you've lost and days you've wasted and time you've let go by and you may still be young. You might be someone like in your 30s, which I would consider young, okay? 
I, I trade some years back if I could. How about you can't? You can't get time back from anyone for any amount of money. Can't get it back. Have you ever thought about when you wasted a day? Have you ever thought about when you were, were feeling sorry for yourself and you, you just allowed that to go on and you thought about... Have you ever thought about times when you've uh, taken time with people that really didn't deserve it and they just, uh, uh, you just lost that time and there's opportunities you miss, opportunity cost. In economics, there's a term called ec- opportunity cost. What it is is what you made, what you accomplished doing a certain activity of what you actually did. Opportunity cost is this. What you could have had if you did it a better way, you would have made more, gotten more accomplished, made more, profited more, and take the higher figure and, and, and subtract it by what you actually got by taking the lower road. And the wrong people may be wasting time or, you know, whatever. And uh, the difference is the opportunity cost. That's what you lost. Opportunity cost is what you lost by doing the lower road instead of the higher road. Remember Paul said, I press on to the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. The high road, not the low road. The mountaintop, not the just little hilltop or plateau. But I got to go up to the mountain that I have to even fly and high, soar high above it, even over the mountains. Even above the storm clouds, I fly high in the presence of the Most High. And I, I feel like a touch of health and healing is flowing. I, I, I really do. I feel like if you've been feeling like weak and tired and sickly, be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed right now in the name of Jesus. I send the word of Psalm 107, verse 20. Psalm 107, verse 20 says... He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Wow. Receive that in Jesus' name. If oppression has been on you and you've been in the wrong environment also, because you know you don't gotta know something. Your environment can pollute you or promote you. Your environment can your environment, depending on what it is, can either pollute you. Or promote you, depending on what it is, depending on who you're with. The people, the company you keep are like the waves of the sea. They could take you out into uncharted, I mean, uh, uh, unsafe waters, or they could take you into the harbor, through the harbor, into, onto the beach, the shoreline, the shore, where there's safety, depending on which way they're going. So your friends, your acquaintances, and company you keep, and your environments, can be a prophecy of your future. So never hang around with low people. Take your time to invest every day in the best of everything, the best way you can possibly do it. And that's where you'll find God helping you. And if people are just on a low level, if they're doing something for you, fine. If there's something you need, great. Just know that. Remind yourself of that. But you always, you always want to be with big people, big thinkers, big creators, big dreamers, big uh, uh, innovators and manifestors of brilliance. That's where you want to be. That's where you're going to produce something. Don't worry, don't worry yourself. Don't worry your pretty little head about wrong people. Just get rid of them. Get rid of them. Move up and out of the way. And there's such a thing as like a bitter spirit. There's such a thing as people that are stuck. There's such a thing as like people that are religious and wrong. There's such a thing as people that have some evil uh, uh, mindsets and they're stuck in their imagination and they don't have any uh, you know, manifested brilliance going on. They're not working on anything good. They're not innovating anything. Those people, if you have to interact with them for some necessary reason, fine. But other than that, you need to just move, keep shifting and keep going. Because what you dream in your imagination is really there. 
What you want is really there. What you're longing for and questing for, the quest that you're on, to find brilliance and excellence and grace and power and gifting and talent and people that have ability to, to solve problems and bring solutions and create systems and make things happen, they're really there. And I prophesy today, in Jesus' name over you, that God is going to help you find them. And they're coming they're coming to us, they're coming to you, more and more and more and more. Our quest for manifested brilliance is on. And the Lord wants us to have the treasures in life that he's promised us prophetically already, in the word, but also by the spirit in prophecies he's given. And those things need to happen right now, in Jesus' name. Thank you for being my partner and friend. Again, let me know. In a message that you'd like to get this, the power to create wealth, it is absolutely brilliant. The power to create wealth on two audio discs or one DVD. I'll be glad to send those to you for a partnership love gift. Uh, you, can get, you can see those on thomasmanton.com, which is live right now. And uh, take a look at that and write to me, okay? There's also a telephone number you can call. And numbers you can call to get in touch with me or you can private inbox me here on this uh, social media platform. Please do put your telephone number and your email address when you write me. Uh, and if you're leaving a message on the, the, any of the voicemail or anything like that, just please do give me a specific uh, uh, a message and brilliant thought. Because I, I said this statement, if you want to be remembered... You have to do something memorable. If you don't want to be forgotten, you have to do something unforgettable. Remember there was a song, Unforgettable, that's what you are. Well, you want to be that. You want to connect. And I want to pray this grace of the Spirit of the Lord for manifested brilliance, the power of innovation, the power of creativity, the power of His glory to flow and flood through you all through your life for your business world to be commenced and created, created and commenced and moved forward with, your ministry, your, 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 your investment life, your financial life, success on every plateau, on every climb to, over the mountaintop, in every area of your life. Complete freedom from oppression and the, the manifested touch of brilliance and glory for the glory of God, but also very much so that you can get so much done in and through your life. And he can do so much in and through your life. That's the prophecy. That's the prayer in Jesus' name. Remember the words, the great words of our dear, great, 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 great uncle in the prophetic, the prophet Isaiah, when he said in Isaiah 48, 17, I am the Lord your God. Listen to this about the mind of God. I am the Lord your God who teaches you to profit through the prophet. You need a prophet to help you profit. I'll say that. But he teaches you to profit and leads you in the way you should go. God is the director of the steps into brilliance, into excellence. And he wants you to be flowing there in Jesus' name. Take the leap. Take the shift. Cut some things out of the way. Change your schedule. Do the more excellent thing, the more brilliant thing. Get into the path of plenty, not the path of little, by just doing brilliant things and manifesting his brilliance. In Jesus' name. I'm Thomas Matthew IV. I love you. I'm praying for you. Talk to you on the next broadcast. In Jesus' name. Amen.